I'm the mother of a nine-year-old Jedi Knight. He's got his own lightsaber, our deep respect for Yoda, and he's taught our family dog to sound like a Wookiee. But of all the Jedi practices, I appreciate one the most because it has potential to change the world. The art of the small. Now, the art of the small is a force technique whereby you become sufficiently microscopic so that you can redistribute the energies of the force and make big change. It's a little like butterflies effect in chaos theory, where one small change in initial condition has a nonlinear impact on a latter state of change. Small movement, big change. Now, there are three parts to the art of the small. The first is a recognition that we are all connected good, bad, indifferent, by an energy called the Force. The second, and this is going to take some Jedi discipline, so you non-Jedis out there, you listen up. And this is an awareness of precisely how we are connected. Now, the Jedi discipline is such that you remove biases to see the connection. Think how easily we become distracted and other, another population when we think about HIV. Immigration, drug use. The third part of practicing the art of the small is the ability, the capacity, the courage to get small. And that is not just about being small, it's about seeing small, seeing what small change can happen that will then make greater change because of the connection we have by the force. Now, I'm going to tell you some stories tonight Part of a story you already know, we're going to flip it on its side, and it will show you how the art of the small can change the world. And I'm going to invite you to do the same. The base situation is this. An outbreak occurred in a southern Indiana community. It began last December, an outbreak of HIV. It ended this last summer. This outbreak portended much more than itself. It became to lead to policy that will forever change the health of our populations in Indiana, and I would argue across the country. Now, big changes, yes, but they weren't possible without these small decisions, small actions, courageous moments, and I want you to listen for them. My colleague, Dr. Will Cook, he's the only primary care physician in the town of Austin, Indiana. He knew there was a problem in December. Oh, over four people had already been diagnosed with HIV. In a county of less than 25,000 people, had only seen five new cases of HIV per year for many, many years. Now, these few cases would portend a major outbreak of HIV that would become the topic across the country of HIV. Now, the outbreak was due to injection of an opioid called Opana. Like heroin, it's injected, unlike heroin, it has to be injected 15 times a day, not just two or three, and it requires a bigger gauge needle because the drug can't sufficiently liquefy, so imagine the tissue damage that is required 15 times a day to avoid painful withdrawal symptoms. This is the situation. Now, while HIV was new to this community, drug use was not. In fact, three generations were injecting Opana on the north side of Austin, in a 10-block radius, living in homes that were dilapidated, forgotten, abandoned by absentee landlords for many, many years. People would walk around in the streets, kind of dazed, looking for drugs or money to buy them. Outsiders called this zombie land. You know, the interesting thing, though, is the outsiders were from Austin itself. Austin had become two different communities separating itself. One, a community which a once vibrant manufacturing base left, and the other, zombie land. Neither the twain met. And the pariah that Scott County became in this country and in the state was really painful to people who lived there. Until something happened. A colleague of mine from CDC was in town. He was responding to the epidemic, and he was talking to a man who was infected with HIV and had shot, shot injected Opana for many, many years, and he was showing my colleague, this man was showing my colleague his works. These are his syringes. They had been used so much that all of the numbers and the lines had been rubbed off, except there were these red dots 
that had been drawn on these syringes over and over again. Yeah, what's with the red dots? My colleague asked. Well, they're to tell people that somebody with HIV used the syringe. I might not be aware or around when somebody needs to use it. They got to know. Now, this man, his one small act of courage to try to protect people around him was changing more than that. Now, you might say, that's small potatoes, that's nothing. But I would suggest to you, by the end of the outbreak, people were marking their syringes as a way, the only prevention tool they had, to convey safety to one another. But that's not all. Listening to this man's story were two county health department nurses who were completely reinforced in the small move they made earlier that day. You see, health department nurses in rural communities backstop for an absent primary care system. So they're often giving injections to kids for vaccinations or primary health care, well, well person visit, if you will, well mom, well child, stuff like that. As my colleague was leaving the health department saying to them, hey, I'm going to go up to the north part of Austin and, and listen to some of the users so I can understand what's happening. Want to come? My colleagues were like, um, we don't do that and we don't go there. But they did that day. They got up from their desks, they walked out the door, drove three miles to the north side of Austin, and they listened to stories. And this would forever change public health nurse Brittany Combs. Now, Brittany Combs became the face of syringe exchange in rural communities across the country because of these experiences. You can often find her driving a van, as she is pictured here, She's delivering syringes, clean syringes and services to people who are subjugated from the normal course of services, building a trust relationship. Now, she was not a fan of needle exchange at the beginning, but after reading research, she understood it. She also, in her acts, changed the very expression of public health nursing in Scott County. She once said, you know, I always wanted to do mission work. Never thought I'd do it in my own town. I'm going to go to another ground floor level and tell you a story of one, one person, Representative, State Representative Ed Clear. Now, Ed Clear watched as the cases of HIV mounted in Scott County, and he knew exactly what would happen because he was raised in neighboring Floyd County. But he was also the chair of the Public Health Committee. So for years, he had heard from families across the state about heroin use and how they were dealing with this, hepatitis C, lacking public health infrastructure. He heard all the stories. And the year prior, he tried to get a syringe exchange bill through the House. It didn't even get out of his committee. But when he saw this happen, he endeavored to take it again and lead the charge. Now, you might say, well, that's his job. I would suggest to you it cost him politically. Ed Clear is quite an unusual Midwestern Republican who does a lot of things for population health that doesn't align with any party whatsoever. You see, he saw the connection between injection drug use and hepatitis C. You probably already know that within five years of starting injection drug use, chances are you're hepatitis C positive. And chances are eight out of 10 of you then are also HIV positive. This is the connection and the situation, and he knew it. And so he led the charge for a bill that then became a law, but he just hoped it wasn't too late. You know, when you smell smoke, he said, you can't wait till the house is combusted in flames to do something about it. I'm gonna tell you a few more stories here, and to suggest to you that even that big policy change of making the law in our state didn't just drop out of the sky. It wouldn't have been possible without people coming forward and telling their stories. Stories that they saw connected to Scott County. They weren't living in Scott County, they were living in another county, and that was their story. It wasn't Opana for them, or opioids, it was heroin. Oh no, no, it wasn't injection drug use, it was opioid abuse, and they're smoking that. But it was a shared story and their small and courageous acts to step forward and speak uncharacteristically publicly is what made the difference. First responders, sheriff, doctors, nurses, and then one mother. And this was toward the end of the, of the whole legislative process. The Senate and the committee were combined. Senate and House were combined in conference committee. TV cameras everywhere. This mother steps forward and she says, you know, I know what I'm doing or what I did was illegal. I was operating a needle exchange out of my kitchen. 
You see, heroin had darkened her home for years. Her daughter couldn't loosen the grips of it, despite, despite many trials at treatment. And so she did what any other mother would do, because she knew that HIV or hepatitis C would take her daughter's life. So that was one small step toward her daughter, but the other small important step was toward the public to tell her story, and she did. One last story. The governor of Indiana, Mike Pence. Now, as the outbreak was occurring, he leaned into the public and tried to respond as much as he could. We knew this would be a challenge for him. HIV was not his issue. Neither was, frankly, injection drug use, and he wasn't a harm reduction guy. Now, the thing you ought to know about harm reduction is that it's a philosophy of population health, saying that one small change is better than none. Think nicotine patches. In this case, a clean needle to someone who is using drugs actually isn't just a clean needle. It's a relationship set up over time that will allow treatment services, testing, trust relationship to be built. One small act, larger outcomes. And he said at the time, you know what, giving somebody a clean needle is bad drug policy. Well, it is, but it's good public health policy. And so in March, he took one step forward and he said, you know what, I'm going to declare an emergency for Scott County and will allow the exploration of a syringe exchange program just for Scott. Now you would say, well, that's small. I did. But by April 20th, he renewed the declaration two weeks after Brittany Combs started her needle exchange in Scott County. And then he signed the law. The bill that passed the House and the Senate, he signed it, and he signed it early. And now 22 counties in this state are moving towards syringe access. The pink counties are making their moves together. They've got coalitions, they're talking, these are cross-sector, some led by sheriffs, some led by parents, whatever. Those in, in orange and in yellow, and it looks like blue, but it's really green, they're moving through the steps of the law. They're taking time to set these things up. These policy changes will affect the health of populations for years to come. But don't forget, the art of the small was at work. They would never have been possible without small decisions, small acts, small moments that built the edifice of larger change. Marking the needle, walking out of the health department and into the community to serve in a new way endeavoring to lead the charge for a law, signing the law. And this is the kind of change we want to sustain. But is it enough? Is it enough world change stuff? Or are these just nice stories? Well, my colleague Will Cook, who still is the only doctor in Austin, he did augment his practice to allow for hepatitis C, services, or HIV services. He's still fighting to get hepatitis C early on because there's a Medicaid policy problem. There's a system structural problem in his way. It needs to be removed. There's no great public health system. We invest $13.08 per capita in state funding, including Medicaid in Indiana. I spent that last week at Starbucks. Maybe I'm the addict, I don't know. <laughs> but Will would say, this is good, but there's more that we have to do there are many more steps forward. More steps that recognize that we are connected, how we are connected, and the change we must make. What is the world that I want to leave for my soon-to-be Jedi master? It's a world where the art of the small is practiced and at work, where we understand that connection and see it for more than one fleeting moment and we work to see the small change and to be that small change. Have that courage. Build the net for larger change. I invite you to see this too and to change the world with me. May the force be with you. <laughs>